Okay, so last time we were talking about degenerations of polarized hot structures. So now we'll talk about degenerations of mixed hot structures. So of mixed hot structures. So the first thing we need to talk about are relative weight filtrations. So the difference with the pure case is we now have a weight filtration. So the setup here is going to be V is a finite dimensional vector space, say over a Q or some field of characteristic zero. Um, w dot equals the filtration. So for example, this could be a mixed hot structure and it's weight filtration. And N takes um, V W dot into itself as a nilpotent endomorphism. So by this I mean that the nilpotent endo N is a nilpotent endomorphism of V and it preserves W. So um, so let's just recall from last time. So uh, if you have, oh, if you have a vector space, maybe I'll call it A, and you have a nilpotent endomorphism, say phi, say this is nilpotent, then from this you can construct a filtration, which I'll call W phi, dot, this is the, the, the weight filtration. of uh, phi, and it has the property that um, phi of wk is contained inside wk minus 2, and it has the property that uh, phi to the k induces an isomorphism between graded wk of a into graded w minus k of a. And you can construct this out of the Jordan form. It always exists. And then if, if um, A had had... So you have a bit of a crash in notation then, right? because you could call it W here for fine. I'll call it, yeah, W equals W phi. Okay. So it's okay because if, if V has, say, weight M, so, for example, it's a hodge structure of weight M. What we do, we want to do is make center this weight filtration at M. So, uh, shift to get uh, filtration M dot centered at the weight M. So, in this case, you would have uh, n to the k would induce an isomorphism. That should be an isomorphism here. Uh, graded m, uh, m plus k of a into graded m, m minus k of a. And again, this will always exist. So it always exists. So there's no restriction at all on the N. But in, the, um, in this case here, what we, what we have is we have a, we have a graded, say, uh, WM of N is going to take graded, maybe I'll use a simpler notation. Uh, we're going to have graded a map on the mth graded quotient um, right so this is just the induced map and this guy's nilpotent 
So that means it has a weight filtration. And we're going to shift it so it's centered here. So we're going to let uh, m sub m dot be equal to the shifted, so the weight filtration of um, n m shifted, um, well, let's just say centered at, we want to center it at m because this guy has weight m, right? And so what's the definition of a relative weight filtration? Um, a weight filtration of n takes v into v relative to w dot is a filtration m dot of v with the property that the induced filtration um, satisfying. The first condition we want is that um, uh, the filtration induced on graded W M of V is uh, is M M dot. So in other words, it cuts out the correct weight filtration on the graded quotients. And two, you also require that N, N of M K is contained inside M K minus two. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and basic simple factor, so remarks, Uh, is that um, one is relative weight filter, so not every n takes uh, v w dot into itself has a relative weight filtration. And two, if it exists, it's unique. Uh, relative weight filtrations, this is easy. Relative weight filtrations are unique when they exist. And so let me do a... Um, Let me do a little example here. Um, if graded w dot of n is equal to zero, then uh, you can easily check that uh, um, m dot exists if and only if uh, n of wk is contained in wk minus two. And in this case, um, m dot equals w dot. And so it's easy to see here. Maybe I should give an example of where it doesn't exist. So I could take. Uh, v equals, say, h1 of some curve relative to, say, x0 and x. So c is, we'll take an x0, and here's an x1. And so we have an exact sequence.
I guess I want. And so this is isomorphic to say Q. And now, um, suppose I looked at the following endomorphism. I just take X and I let it travel around uh, a loop here, say gamma. So that'll, th you'll get a corresponding nilpotent endomorphism of this. It's going to be trivial here. Uh, it's going to be trivial on the graded quotient, but the endomorphism will be non-trivial. So it can't be, yeah. So give this a weight filtration. So this is going to be, say, this is going to be equal to W0 and this guy here, W minus 1. They're the standard weight filtrations on, in the situation. This guy does not have, uh, so, so <clears throat> let x move around gamma, and I'll be sloppy, say this is in h1 not equal to 0 in h1 of c, and then <coughs> n equals log of the automorphism, the corresponding automorphism, and uh, n is not equal to 0, grwn dot is equal to zero, but no, no relative weight filtration. Mm -hmm. It's a silly thing because for there to be a relative weight filtration, n would have to lower weights by two. But if it lowered weights by two, it would be trivial. So, um, and there are better examples. I didn't think of one. Right, so let's talk about degenerations of mixed odd structures. Uh, so this is going to be very similar to degenerations of hot structures. Uh, so the input is one, we have a filtered local system over some base. I'm going to take the base to be one dimensional for simplicity. You can do all of this in higher dimensions. But in fact, you can test to see if something's a variation just by restricting to a curve. Um, but anyway, so this is a filtered local system. Sister Q local system. And let's assume that um, the local monodromy so my the C will be an affine, well, a possibly affine curve. This will be, say, projective. So assume that the local monodromy is unipotent. This is true in our this will be true in our situation. It's always true after a finite base change. And the s second thing we want is um, a Hodge filtration. Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be a weight fil at the moment. It's just a filtered local system, but yeah, and it will be the weight filtration, a Hodge filtration of V, and this is defined to be. Uh, uh, so it's a. We'll call it F dot. So that extends to a filtration by subbundles. Of the canonic of Deline's canonical extension.
Right? So, so what this is giving us, as in the case of variations of Hodge structure, if you have, here's your curve over here, and here's some cusp here, P, it's giving you a vector space that you associate with that, that cusp. And now, and we're going to have a Hodge filtration. Here it is here by holomorphic subbundles. That'll cut out a Hodge filtration on each of these fibers. And the weight filtration is going to behave well. And so this, um, this guy here will have a natural flat connection. The characterization of the extended connection is that it uh, will follow from what I say here. So we want, um, so this here implies that the residue at P of NABLA is nilpotent. All P in S. And um, we also require the, the connection has regular singular points. So NABLA takes uh, V bar into V bar tens whoops. V bar tensor omega one C bar log S. So you're allowed to have logarithmic singularities. So these these to say that that is the canonics extension of V is to just to say that these two properties hold. Whoops. Ah. And so we want this to satisfy Griffith's transversality. So um, So this means that if you take a section of Fp of V bar and you differentiate it, you get something that's at worst in Fp minus 1 of V bar tensor omega 1 uh, C bar log F mm -hmm. for all P. Okay, and so the next thing is the obvious condition here. We need that fiber by fiber we get a mixed Hodge structure. So each fiber of, say, V over C um, is a mixed Hodge structure. So it gets its rational structure from the Q local system. Um, so with with induced Hodge and weight filtrations. Okay, so just and now the next condition we want is actually a non-trivial condition: is that um, for each p in S. Uh, Let's just let NP be equal to the residue at P of the connection. So this is nilpotent. So we assumed that the residues were all nilpotent. And um, by the way, I should say here too, the naturality of Deline's construction implies that all the, the weight bundles extend th through as well. So the W dot extends as well. But this, this is not a hypothesis. It's automatic. OK, and so the condition, we, what we want is that uh, each NP so it takes the fiber of the canonical extension over here with its weight filtration into itself has a relative weight filtration. Right, so you want the relative weight filtration to exist. And um, five is that for each 
V in um, the tangent space of P of C bar, and this guy not equal to zero, um, So I'll call it V, V. So I explained how to construct out of a tangent vector a Q structure on the fiber of the canonical extension. So this is, this is the Q structure on uh, VP um, then with the the weight filtration and the Hodge filtration, sorry, I want to take M dot. This is the relative weight filtration. And F dot is a mixed Hodge structure filtered by W dot, filtered in the category of mixed Hodge structures. So it's a more complicated structure. And if you go back, a good exercise is to look at the definition of the variation of Hodge structure. In that case, there's no W dot, or the W dot is trivial. And then you just have M, M dots going to be the monodromy weight filtration shifted. So anyway, so this, these are basically the axioms of an admissible variation. Such a thing is called an admissible variation. Is that, is the fact, I mean, the, the residue preserves the weight filtration that's automatically automatic? Yeah, because the, monodro the, mo the local monodromy preserves W dot. It's, it's unipotent, so it's logarithm well. The logarithm is just a polynomial in the monodromy. I mean, you, the weight filtration you extend across <coughs> using it's the link canonical extension, right? Right, so you can look at the the... Because, because the local system was filtered, right? So each WM of V is a, a local system. You can take its canonical extension. Then you could, naturality just implies that that just gives you a filtration of the canonical extension. And so the local monodromy is uh, unipotent. And so its logarithm is nilpotent. And it will preserve the weight filtration because the monodromy because the filtration is by flat sub-bundles or by sub-local systems. Anyway, such, such a, a um, whatever, a V, W dot, you know, F dot, etc., is called an admissible variation. And this definition may look very strange. So the question is, is it natural? And the answer is, oh, let's, um, so when you look at this condition, it looks very strange. But when you try to construct these things, if you're in the business of constructing them, it's usually not a problem to construct the M dot. It just comes out. So, uh, and this will become clear what I, when I discuss these examples. So, one is, so this is due to Steenbrink and Zucker. By the way, I think the definition of uh, the relative weight filtration was made by Deline in V2. You know, I'm sure he guessed it from, I haven't looked at it, but I'm sure he guessed that from the l attic setup. The first Hodge theoretic case where this was considered was by Steenbrink and Zucker. And they showed that local systems uh, of, yeah, maybe I'll just say it this way. Suppose I have an X over C, and this is a family of smooth, but not necessarily projective smooth varieties. And I want it to be, by family, I mean topologically, locally trivial. 
And so in this case here, our local systems are k f lower star of q. And every fiber here has a weight filtration. Delene's construction of a, so here I'm assuming for every t in c, xt is a smooth variety. So its cohomology has a mixed hot structure. You can easily see the weight filtration is locally constant. And um, these guys are admissible variations of mixed height structure. <clears throat> this is also a good source for relative weight filtrations. They wrote out a lot of the details. Um, then there's uh, Guillen, Navarro, uh, Poeta, I think. This is my memory. They did the case, the more general case, uh, x over c here. But this is just a fam uh, topologically, locally trivial family of complex varieties. So not necessarily smooth, not necessarily uh, complete. Right? They can be singular, open, whatever. Um, and, and, and again, here, you'll get the same result. RK F lower star of Q is an admissible variation of mixed hot structure. This subject loves uh, abbreviations. <laughs> and then I'll, another one we'll need is uh, three, this is myself, is that you, if you can look at the following situation, so uh, we'll take a section here, say sigma. So this is a pointed family. of smooth varieties. So again, family just means topologically, locally trivial here. Um, and so here you can look at the local system. So over, you can look at the local system. Maybe I'll, I like to call it P. So over T in here, you would look at pi 1 of xt, and you would look at uh, it with the base point sigma of t, and you would take its unipotent completion and maybe take the coordinate ring of that or the Lie algebra of that. So we'll need this local system here. So I'm just, so th this is actually in general infinite dimensional, but it'll be a pro thing, but this is an admissible variation of mixed hot structure. And we'll be interested in this when this is the universal elliptic curve uh, minus at zero section, and this is really just a section of tangent vectors along the zero section. What's P here? Sorry? You said that the Lie of the Fourier point condition is contained in P. What's P? Well, this is, the, by P I mean the local system whose fiber over T is the unipotent fundamental group. And I, I will eventually give a quick definition of this. I'm going to say something about Tanaki and business in a little bit just for, in the interest of efficiency, but it's basically <coughs> the best unipotent approximation to the fundamental group of um, the curve or whatever. All right, so now I, I can define universal mixed elliptic motives, finally. And to do that, I needed the notion of a um, variation of mixed height structure and, and relative weight filtration and so on. And I thought that would be a bad, that was a bad place to start the first lecture. Or it would have been. So. So, and I'll, I'll r remind you that this is joint uh, with Makoto Matsumoto. All 
Okay, so I'll very briefly recall the, the, uh, the rough definition. And the words will probably make a little more sense. So what is a universal A? So is a compatible set of filtered local systems. And I'll be more precise about this later, but for example, you would have Betty, Q Duram. This together gives you Hodge, and you would have L Attic. So here you would get a leaf sheaf. Um, And there are two basic conditions uh, with G R W dot Yeah, maybe I'll call it I'm basically gonna call it V W dot and with G R W dot of V isomorphic to a direct sum of uh, S, N, H, R. So H is our basic local system, and you'd want something uh, right. And so when I say Hodge, implicit in this, I mean that I get an admissible variation of mixed Hodge structure, and then. Um, also uh, have a filtered uh, mixed Tate motive over Z. And so let's call it V, and it's got a weight filtration. This is, this is the weight filtration in MTM, and it's going to be filtered by by another filtration W dot in MTM. Right, so it's going to be a filtered mixed Tate motive, and the mixed Tate motive weight filtration is called M. That's because it's going to be a relative weight filtration, such that the fiber of V over the integral base point DDQ is, um, is V m dot w dot. <laughs> so I'm going to explain what this all means, but just this is the overview. <clears throat> okay, so, so so let's look at the official definition. So So a universal mixed elliptic motive it um, consists of so it's best to start with the mixed state motive um, a filtered object v w dot of mixed Tate motives over Z. Um, and denote the weight filtration of V by M dot. So I did that to drive Francis nuts, everybody nuts. Two a representation rho which takes SL2Z into 
the automorphisms of the Betty realization of V, and it preserves this guy here. And this guy, I should point out, as I hope I explained clearly before, this is naturally isomorphic to pi 1 of m11 analytic with, with the base point ddq. You can lift the base point, the tangent vector ddq, to the upper half plane by as the imaginary axis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry? Don't have to disconnect the half plane. Yeah. Well, you only need the germ of it up near plus infinity, you know. This condition is not automatic. Sorry? This condition is not automatic. Which one? The last one. If I, if I just take some admissible variation of cost structure and... Well, it's, it's, part of the de it's, it's part of the definition. But the fact that the associated graded is just given by direct sums of something. Ah, okay, okay. L let me make, well, no, but you could have all sorts of other uh, representations of SL. SL2Z is virtually free. So take a finite index subgroup. It's free. You can map it just about anywhere. And that'll give you a local system on a finite cover, and then you can push it down. But which variations come from geometry? Are these all the ones that come from geometry? No, I can construct ones that come from geometry. Uh, Sorry? Yeah. And, and I want to stress, note that we're not allowing things like SNH tensored with some simple Hodge structure that's not a Q of R, right? This, this is a different category. It's going to have a different Tanakian fundamental group. And I'll try to explain that later. I mean, this was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, So I, I want uh, if you assume that the associated graded are the direct sum of S and H R, yeah. doesn't that automatically imply that the that the hot structure at that tangential vector has to be mixed tate? No. It doesn't again. Ah, uh, sorry. It implies it has to be mixed tate, but it doesn't imply that it's an object of the you know, uh, But that's what I mean, but you do get all the realizations. No, you can get, just take any mixed tate motive that's not in, that has periods that aren't multi zetas. So you just take any mixed Hodge tate structure whose periods aren't multi zetas. And now look at the constant variation over M11 with that as fiber. That won't be in this category because the limit will be that constant Hodge structure, but it's not the Hodge, say, the Hodge realization of something that's in MTMZ. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where are we? I've lost my blackboard. Which board am I on? <laughs> oh, I just did this and I'm about to erase this. So. Yeah. <coughs> right. Uh, so, Sorry? When you say mixed state motor, you actually mean like an, an object in the domain construct? Yeah, I said somewhere here, I think I said it, it's an object of MTMZ, not just some hot structure that's of type, these graded quotients are of type PP. Um, you know, it's a more stringent condition, so you can then say, well, are there any interesting examples? So I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, where each GRWM of um, hang on, I just lost track of where I am here. Um,
Where did I go? Well, let me just write it down. So, um, so this this will give us this will give us here a local system v w dot over m one one analytic, right? And we want each uh, is a sum. This is just as a local system. Uh, of S uh, N H, there can be various N where N is congruent to M mod two, right? So just as a topological local system, it, let me see if I can get these pages. Oh, uh, yeah. And now the next thing is three. Um, a filtered vector bundle. Um, v w dot over m one one bar over q. So this is going to be the Q to Ram story uh, with connection uh, Nabla, which takes V into V tensor omega 1 M 1 1 over Q log P. And this, this guy here is the cusp the cusp q equals 0. Uh, and a filtration, you need a Hodge filtration. Such that uh, the connection satisfies Griffith's transversality. Right, so you only lose one degree. And, uh, and the residue at P of the connection is nilpotent. Actually, I, I needn't have added that. That's going to be automatic. And so now we can combine this uh, I, uh, with a flat connection. I forgot to say this. We want a flat connection. And so uh, then we want the obvious isomorphism of the Q to Ram setup. So what we want is if we took V, W dot, uh, Nabla, and we tensor it with C, this, and we restrict it to M11 uh, analytic, or just M11, say C, this should be isomorphic to um, and its natural flat connection. Right, so this is just giving a Q to Ram version of the, the vector bundle underlying this guy here. <laughs> and together, um, they, they form an admissible variation of mixed height structure over M11 <coughs> analytic. Right, so, um, And then the last part's the elatic part.
in fact, one can probably leave out some of these pieces it's still the way I think about it. I think some, the existence of some are consequences of the other parts. Um, four, uh, five. So the representation rho L, which is going to take pi 1 of m11 1 1 over q bar uh, ddq into ort VL. So VL is going to be the elatic realization of the mixed state motive induced by rho. So this guy here is naturally isomorphic to the profinite completion of SL2z. So this is SL2z hat. So, um, so the representation from rho on the Betty version of this will induce a representation here. And we want this to be GQ equivariant. So the Galois group acts on this because this, this base point here is uh, Q rational. And it also acts here because the elatic realization of V is uh, Galois module. Yep. All right, so that's the end of the definition. All right, so a, a couple of quick remarks. Sorry? To provide the VL independently of what came before. No, the, the, we start out with a mixed Tate motive, and a mixed Tate motive has an elatic realization, and this is the elatic realization, so that comes equipped with the Galois action. What was the origin of this parity thing? And, sorry, I'm convert to N mod 2. Well, because, because this is a variation of weight 1, and I mean, this condition is forced by this, saying that this guy is a variation, so SNH is a variation of weight uh, n. And then when you take twist it, the, the parity of the weight doesn't change. And you can easily prove that because this is a simple local system, it can occur as a variation of Hodge structure. The way it occurs as a variation is unique up to take twist. So you can't put an even power in an odd weight and so on. So the remark here, I'll just make an obvious remark. You can do something similar. There are a few technical difficulties, but there are, um, so one is similarly can define uh, mixed elliptic motives over, say, M1 N plus R. You have to choose the, a base point, and then you have to show it's independent of the base point. Here, there's only basically one choice. Um, and you can also do it, and you can also do mixed elliptic motives over things like M1 N plus R, and you can take a level. I don't know what, uh, lambda. You know, level structure. And maybe here you have to walk over some ring of integers. And so um, this guy here. I will denote this category by M E M uh, N plus R. The main examples are going to be very simple. And so the category I'm calling M E M is really equal to M E M 1. Right? That's the one I've been talking about, but you can do it with a tangent vector. So let's look at some examples. So um, so the first one is these are the these are the simple in any of these categories. These are the simple guys, the only simple guys. These are just you can just take S N H 
are they occur. I've already shown you that these guys degenerate to a direct sum of Tate motives. So these are, we've already verified this. Um, the second example, uh, what I'll call geometrically constant. So these are just, you just take, i.e., you just take a V in MTM and you just look at and uh, pull back So think of the mixed Tate motive as being a local system here. You just pull it back here, and it'll be a, as a variation of Hodge structure, it'll just be a, a constant variation of mixed Hodge structure. And as a Lee sheaf, it'll have trivial monodromy on the geometric part of the fundamental group. It'll just be a Galois representation. OK, so these guys. Um, Third example, and I, actually I'll talk about a slightly more general situation. Um, the, uh, the elliptic polylogarithms of Balenson and Levin. So ba they write it down as one thing, I think they call it the elliptic polylogarithm but I like to split it into pieces. So this is some variation. This, this is some variation, say, P over the universal elliptic curve. So we could have also defined mixed elliptic motives here. Um, you, can, you can pull back along the zero section to get something over here. So their restriction to the zero section give, um, you, you get these simple extensions which are of the form S2NH. And we'll see in a bit that these correspond to Eisenstein series. Uh, Non-trivial extension that corresponds to um, the norm G2N plus 2, the Eisenstein series. <clears throat> and these are going to be the most basic, these are all the simple extensions. So I like to think of, these are the analogs. You know, if you think what we're trying to do is construct an extension for every elliptic curve, <coughs> these are the generalizations of the values of the Riemann zeta function, you know, that you get in the theory of mixed Tate motives. See, so these are analogs of zeta values. So um, four, and this, this example is important for us. So let's look at M11. So I'm going to look at M1 vector 1. So here I have to look at that. So a, a typical element of this guy here would be an elliptic curve plus a non-zero tangent vector. And I'm going to look at the local system. Again, I'm going to call it P. And the fiber of this guy over here is what I'm going to call P E V. So this is a, a pronyl potent Lie algebra. Um, so P E V is defined to be the Lie algebra of pi 1 unipotent of the elliptic curve minus its identity. So this is E minus 0 V. 
So this is a freely algebra. So this, this guy here, just to give you some idea, is uh, isomorphic to the freely algebra on H1 of E completed. This is not natural. And the weight filtration will be its lower central series. Okay. So, and um, so this is a pro. And here, this is one reason I need some decorations because I need base points. So, um, do you want a coffee break? I can keep going. Maybe I, why don't I throw something up on the board and then we can take three is a certain quotient of four. Sorry. Yes. Well, these things are going to occur everywhere. And so, yeah, they certainly occur inside this guy up here. Um, so, uh, the next thing is... So, the Tanakian fundamental group of M E M. And you can also do with some decorations here. They're very they don't change when you change decorations, this guy, the fundamental group of this guy changes in some predictable way. So um, yeah, so I'll just start with a remark is that um, the categories M, E, M, N plus R are Tanakian over Q. And this means they're the category of representations of some affine group scheme or the same, it's also a pro-algebraic group. And um, this leads us to the following problem. Compute pi one of M E M. So let me stop here. I'll start up after the break. I'll do a very, very quick resume of some things about Tanakian categories, just so, and in fact, then I'll rigorously construct unipotent completion in a way that Francis thinks is illuminating, but I think other ways are illumin more illuminating. Um, and then I will go on to discuss this problem. And in fact, we know a lot. We don't know it. We can't completely compute it. You run up against some standard conjectures in number theory at some point. But we have very good evidence that it's got a certain presentation that we can't write down explicitly. So uh, I'll do that after the break. So. Um, This will be very brief. So uh, f equals a field of characteristic 0. And uh, so a neutral ca category over f is a rigid uh, abelian tensor category C. Uh, let me, I'll say a bit about this. 
where the, there's a trivial object which will denote by 1 uh, is isomorphic to F. So a tensor category has a tensor product and here it's got to be commutative, associative and so on, all sorts of um, axioms have to be satisfied. These are exactly the axioms that are satisfied by the category of representations of a group. You have an associative tensor product and so on. Um, and it has to admit an exact and faithful from C, and they're usually denoted by omega, from C into vector spaces into finite dimensional. This is going to be finite dimensional vector spaces over F. Uh, that preserves tensor products. So So the first example Did I leave something? One, G is any group. And you can look at the F representations of G. So this is just representations of G on a finite dimensional vector space category of finite dimensional um, G modules. Finite dimensional over F G modules. And two mixed Tate motives and mixed elliptic motives n plus r. And I should say here the trivial object here is just equal to q, the trivial representation. I should say f, the trivial representation. Here the trivial object 1 is just q of 0. Another good example is mixed Hodge structures. <laughs> and here the trivial example is uh, Q of 0 again. And 4, you can look at mixed Hodge structures X, so it's equal to the category of admissible variations. And so X here is a smooth variety. So um, and the basic fact we need is that I, I should say such a functor is called a fiber functor, and there can be many of them. A basic fact is that um, if omega takes C into vec F, is a fiber functor, is any fiber functor, so that's one of these exact and faithful functors, then uh, C is equivalent to um, rep FG, where G is the automorphisms, the tensor automorphisms of omega. Okay, so what, what, what's an automorphism here? These are natural transformations. A 
actually I should say natural isomorphisms. from omega to omega um, that preserve that respect tensor product. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll denote, so basically it's saying that C is the category of representations of this group. This group here is going to be, it's affine. It's also pro-algebraic, pro-linear algebraic actually. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is to write down this group when the category is just MEM, mixed elliptic motives. And so we're going to do notation is that G is equal to pi 1 of C with base point this fiber functor. So let's do an example, a more interesting example. Uh, unipotent completion. So how do you define the unipotent completion of a discrete group? Well, one way is to use Tanakian categories. Ah, sorry, discrete group. And so F equals a field of characteristic zero. And in this case, we're going to take C to be the category of finite dimensional unipotent representative representations of gamma. And these all defined over F. So there's two ways to say what a unipotent representation is. It's a homomorphism of gamma. One way to say it is, so this will be contained in G, L, N, F. It's a representation that can be conjugated into uh, unipotent matrices. Or you can also say just a representation that, that admits a filtration V equals V0 contains V1 contains V2 and so on where, where by gamma submodules where each VJ mod VJ plus 1 is a trivial gamma module. So that's a more coordinate free way to say it. It's just that, that you can filter the, the modules by submodules and all the associated graders are just trivial modules. Mm -hmm. And now this category is Tanakian. So omega takes C into VEC F. It just takes a representation, goes to its underlying vector space. So it's clearly faithful clearly exact. And so um, the definition of unipotent completion is definition is that uh, gamma unipotent over F is defined to be pi 1 of this category with respect to this <coughs> with respect to this fiber functor. <coughs> Um, if you're as good at Tanakian categories as Francis is, you can easily work with this definition. There are others. Maybe I should say something. Just to, uh, <coughs> yeah, I'll just remark. So this is an older way of thinking about it, but one way is you can, if gamma is finitely generated. So that definition there does not assume the group's finitely generated. 
uh, you can look at F gamma, which equals the group algebra. And you can take, uh, there's two ways you can go here. One is you can say what is O of gamma unipotent over F. So what's the coordinate ring of this? And it's actually, it's equal to the um, Hom continuous. So what does Hom continuous here? So you've got an augmentation from F gamma into F, the standard augmentation. And you've got an ideal, which is the kernel of epsilon, which is the augmentation. And it defines a topology on this by the powers of this ideal. So this is just, so we can give this the iatic topology. And so this is just also the direct limit of the HOM uh, F gamma mod I to the N F. And uh, this is a Hopf algebra. You can easily check. <coughs> so, and this more or less comes out of Quillen. A long time ago, Quillen wrote a paper on rational homotopy theory and buried in the appendix is a section on what he called Maltef completion, but nowadays is called unipotent completion. Yeah, another, another way to say it too is the uni, if you take the universal enveloping algebra of the Lie algebra of pi of, of gamma unipotent over F, this is just equal to uh, F gamma completed, and this is just the inverse limit, I should say the completed enveloping algebra of, of F gamma mod i to the n. <clears throat> and so our problem is to compute pi 1 of m e m. So sometimes I'll be precise about the fiber functor because it matters. Other times it doesn't matter because um, you always get the same group. You get, just get different inner forms of the group. You know, the, if you use different fiber functors, you get the um, the fundamental groups are isomorphic to an isomorphism unique up to conjugation. All right. So um, let me start with generalities. So um, some of the most of this is very soft, with one exception. Um, the first the first statement is well, we have. Uh, a functor from mixed Tate motives into mixed elliptic motives. This just takes a mixed Tate motive to the constant, the geometrically constant things. So this is, we've got M11 and we map down to spec Z and you can take a mixed Tate motive over here and pull it back here. So these are the geometrically constant guys and so this gives us geometrically constant. So this gives us a map from pi 1 of m e m to pi 1 of m t m. And this guy is, you can argue directly that it's subjective, but it's easier to see that you also have um, a functor from mixed elliptic motives into mixed Tate motives. You, this is just the fiber over DDQ. Or if you think of the definition, a mixed elliptic motive consisted of a mixed Tate motive plus a whole bunch of other stuff. 
So, um, so you just take the, forget everything else and just take the mixtape motive, and this is going to give us a splitting of this guy here. So this is going to give us, this will give us uh, pi 1 of mixed tate motives into pi 1 of m e m. And this is, if you think about it, it's clearly a splitting of this. Because if you take a constant, geometrically constant mixed elliptic motive, its fiber over the base point is the same as its fiber everywhere. So, So um, what, we can, what we can do is define uh, pi 1 geometric of mixed elliptic motives to be equal to the kernel of pi 1 mixed elliptic motives mapping to pi 1 of mixed Tate motives. I should remind you of what this guy is here. So we, what we do is we have an exact sequence, pi 1 of mixed elliptic motives. It maps to pi 1 of mixed Tate motives. And it's got to be surjective. The kernel is pi 1 geometric of mixed elliptic motives. And we have a section here. This section is given by the base point DDQ. In fact, we can compare this with, <coughs> so for example, the Atal fundamental group of M11, and it, it's compatible with this here. There'll be maps, but I'll discuss that later. Um, right, just, I'll just recall here, pi 1, so if we look at pi 1, of mixed taint motives, it maps to GM. So this tells it, this is basically the fundamental group of the category of split mixed taint motives, things that are just direct sums of Q of Ns. And the kernel, I like to call it K. And K is, um, so uh, this guy here is pro unipotent. And every pro-unipotent group is isomorphic to its Lie algebra via the exponential map. So um, k, little k, will be Li of k. And this guy is isomorphic to a free Lie algebra on z3, z5, z7. Odd, odd things here. I better put z9 completed. Mm -hmm. Completed means take power series, Lee power series. <laughs> so, um, proposition is, the first statement is that um, there is a natural homomorphism uh, from SL2Z into the geometric fundamental group of mixed elliptic motives. And here I'll be more precise. Uh, I should be the fiber functor is the Betty fiber functor, and I'm going to take uh, the Q rational points of this group. And so the Betty fiber functor takes the fiber, so omega Betty takes V, a mixed elliptic motive, and it takes it to um, the fiber of this over DDQ, 
and then it takes the Betty realization of that. <coughs> And two, it is Zariski dense. So um, this is the uh, this guy here is the only. This is not that hard, but it it I mean it's everything else I'm saying is soft. This requires some work. So what? Let me sketch the proof. The proof of one is easy. So we have we have we have functors uh, from mixed Tate motives. We can take it to mixed elliptic motives. So this takes a mixed Tate motive to the constant geometrically constant mixed elliptic motive, and now here we can map into representations of SL2Z. say Q representations. Mm. Sorry? Because you have a local system. Yes, well, I mean, if you remember the, de the way I wrote down the definition, there was a V and there was a row and a whole bunch of other things. I'm just taking it to the row. And now if you look at what happens here, so the fundamental group of this won't be SL2Q or something. It'll be much bigger. But there is a natural map. This picture will give you a natural map. Yeah, and you've got, if you took omega beta here, you take vec Q, and then you just take the forgetful functor here. This commute. So you get a map here in omega <coughs> beta, and you will get the map into here. And why does it land in the geometric part? Well, if you continue on to pi 1 of mixed Tate motives, say Q, um, what we know here is that this map here, this is trivial. It takes every, every one of these guys goes to the trivial representation. And that's telling you that this here is trivial, which is telling you that you landed in the geometric fundamental group. So this part is completely soft, the first assertion. Two, so, um, Whoops. <laughs> I've got an old version and a new version of this page here, so I have to go delete that. Um, so this follows from A is <coughs> the theorem of the fixed part. And what this theorem says in this case is um, if you have a variation of mixed Hodge structure which has trivial monodromy, it has to be constant. Okay, which imply the theorem of the fixed part just says that if you have any variation over some x, it says H0 of xv maps to, say, the fiber over x. This is a morphism of mixed hard structures. But you can use that to prove the following statement. It implies that uh, an variation of mixed hard structure with trivial monodromy is constant. And so this implies, so if you think about it, saying if you um, map this into here, it's telling you that the Zariski closure of this has got to generate 
sorry, the normal closure. If you, if you look at the normal closure of, the, of SL2Z in here and take it to the risky closure, it's got to be the whole thing. So this part's also relatively soft. Um, this implies that um, the, the, the Zariski closure of the normal closure of the image of SL2Z uh, is But we have to see that the image of SL2Z, the closure of it's normal. And the way we do that is you have to use the fact that, um, so the existence, so this, this is the non-trivial part, the existence of the limit mixed hot structure on the relative completion, which I'm about to define, implies so you have to use DDQ as your base point um, implies that um, the, the uh, Zariski closure is normal in uh, right, and so this implies that you put these two things together, you see that the so the, you'll see that the Zariski closure of this inside pi one of MEM is pi one geom. If you don't like that, I've got a version of this written up somewhere. It's in. But anyway, this is, an, this is important because it's going to allow us to bound the size of the kernel. Okay, so we're going to call a mixed elliptic motive a split if it is a direct sum of S, N, H, R's, of simple. These are the simple objects of mixed elliptic motives. Um, and so split. It means semi-simple. Yeah. Sorry? It means semi-simple because you say it's a diatomal. Yeah, okay. So it's this, these are the semi-simple mixed elliptic motors. Yeah, better. The semi-simple. Right. So, so semi-simple mixed elliptic motives uh, are, is a Tanakhian category. It's a subcategory of the whole thing, it's, which is clear. And then pi 1 of semi-simple mixed elliptic motives, if you think about it, is just isomorphic to GLH. Or it's actually equal to GLH and it's isomorphic to GL2. Right. This is, um, you may wonder about the Tate twist, but if you look at, if you look at, for example, GLH, yeah, it's, the de it's actually the inverse of the determinant. De determinant, if you look at this representation into GM, 
this representation corresponds to Q of minus 1. That's because we put H in weight plus 1. If I put H in weight minus 1, it would correspond to Q of 1. Yeah. So, all right, so now um, we have, so we have, uh, we have semi-simple mixed elliptic motives. This includes into mixed elliptic motives. So this is going to give us a, uh, a map on fundamental groups the other way. We also have a map back because we can take GRW dot. Right? If you have a mixed elliptic motive, its associated grade, weight graded is semi-simple. And so what this gives us, so this gives us, we're going to have uh, pi 1 of m e m, and we can use any fiber functor, mapping into uh, g l h, and it's got to be subjective because we have a splitting, and the splitting is g r w dot. And so there'll be a kernel, and what we'll see soon is that that kernel is pro-unipotent. Um, we'll see, so, remark, soon we'll see that the kernel, I mean, it stands to reason because the kernel should be telling us about extensions, and in the theory of motives, you can only extend by stuff of lower weight. <coughs> but we'll see it another more direct way. The, the kernel of pi 1 of mixed elliptic motives into GLH is pro unipotent. Okay, so let me, I, mean, I brought up the issue of relative completion, so let's look at, maybe I'll call it relative unipotent. And this idea, I might have been the first person to write about it, the idea came to me in a letter from Deline. <laughs> so may be sent from this very place. Um, so this is a generalization of unipotent completion, and f here is equal to a field of characteristic 0. r is equal to a reductive f group. You don't have to take it to be reductive, but uh, there's no real difference. Um, and I'm going to put an example here, r equal to the trivial group. This is going to give us a unipotent completion. So this is just going to generalize what I did earlier. Um, here um, we're going to have rho takes gamma into the F points of R. This is a risky dense rep presentation. And now I'm going to take C is going to be the category of finite dimensional representations V of gamma. Whoops, I left out. Gamma here is a discrete group. So I'll put up here. Uh, gamma equals discrete group. In all of these, there's also a pro-finite analog. 
So in this good thing here, but I'm assuming that the fiber function on MEM. Sorry? Uh, you're assuming something about the fiber function on MEM for the splitting. In this here? Yeah, it doesn't have to factor through the gradient one. Um, oh, it's true for any fiber function. Yeah, function. but okay, but I can take, I can take, uh, what's the fiber functor? I can take it to be um, graded. Sure, sure, sure. Right. You have to say yeah, that too. Yeah, I have to, you're right. I have to take graded um, and say Betty or. Oh, sorry, I thought it was for any. Oh, you fit, you've chosen the fiber functor to be. No. No, I think I think Francis is right. I think I need to say what the fiber functor is, but I can take the weight graded fiber functor. Right. I can have any any fiber functor to go this way and to get one back this way. It's the analog of this picture in topology. We've got a base point here. We've got a base point here, but we may choose a section. We get a different base point. <clears throat> so these are F representations um, that admit a filtration. So this filtration, the way I'm setting this up, this doesn't have to be um, unique to some filtration. Um, zero equals V0 contained in V1 contained in, say, Vn equals V uh, by gamma submodules. Um, such that G, the associated graded of V um, is an R module. So you've got, you've got an action of the algebraic group, the reductive group on the associated graded. And gamma acts via on gr dot v via, you'll have um, gamma will map into, and this acts on So G R W, right? So the action on the gr all the graded quotients really come from representations of R, and the way gamma acts on them is via this rational representation of R. So this is Tanakian. So. Um, And there's an obvious fiber functor, just take the underlying vector space. And so the relative completion is, I'll call it uh, G rel, is defined to be uh, pi 1 of this category. And here, this is the obvious fiber functor. So, so it's important information about this group is proposition is uh, one is G rel is an extension uh, one into what I'll call U rel into G rel into R into 1, where U rel is pro-unipotent. Actually, in case I haven't said it, pro-unipotent just means an inverse limit of unipotent groups. Okay. 
too high because expo exponent u of u what? Uh, rel, I just write rel here for relative completion. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, I, again, I adapt but, uh, the notation so to the situation. Here, here we have. It was for an article. Here we've got one group that we care about, and that's SL2Z. So sometimes you've got to put the dependence of the group in there. Um, there is a natural homomorphism. from gamma into G rel. And to be accurate, I should put F rational points. Uh, it is a risky dense. And now, if you have a Maybe I'll, here I'll just say some things. Just leave that blank there. Um, so some remarks is that um, if, suppose if U is pro-unipotent, well maybe I'll start out with if, if, if U is unipotent, and u is equal to the Lie algebra of u, then you can easily check that u into u, put the other way. The exponential maps polynomial, it's a polynomial bijection, and then you've got a well-defined logarithm. That's just because all the mate, every unipotent group can be moved inside this guy here, and then it becomes clear. And so if, now if you have a unipotent group, and this guy's going to be nilpotent, um, if U is pro-unipotent, still true. Every, every pro-unipotent group is isomorphic to its Lie algebra by the exponential and logarithm maps. That means to know this, you just have to know that. And three, and I can explain this in more detail later on, um, if U is pro-nilpotent, U has presentation, has a minimal presentation. Um, U is isomorphic to the Frehley algebra on its H1 of U. You have to complete this, and then there will be a map, there will be an injective map from H2 of U into, um, let's call it, say, phi, C, into the commutator subalgebra. And you take, you look at the image of C, and you take the closed ideal that generates. You've written that equals here, but then you want uh, isomorphic. Yeah. Right? So this is, um, again, I, I write versions of this in various papers, but this is just some generalization of a result of stallings. But um, it's not canonical, but basically, you know, in a, in a regular group, H2 can sort of be bigger than the relations somehow. You know, there's a tight, there's a tight relationship between the minimal set of generators for the relation ideal and H2. Right, so up here, let me put that up there. So three, so we care about what H1 and H2 are of this guy here. And so it's for all um, R modules V. By that I mean all rational representations of R. Um, H1 uh, of U tensored with V, take R invariance, is isomorphic to H1 gamma V. And 
H2 of U tensor V R invariance injects into H2 of gamma V. So let's put this here. So now, um, so this is telling us something about the presentation. And so maybe a good place to stop today will be, I'll do the example of SL2Z. So we'll have a lot more to say about it, but let me just start with the basics. So we know that the relative completion of SL2Z is going to... Homology of homology, I'm sorry, at the end. Last statement. Homology of homology. This, uh, this is cohomology. So what's in singular homology, you know, H1, H, you know, the cohomology is the dual of homology. In this theory, you have to take continuous duals. So the H1 is some sort of in thing, and the H lower one will be a pro thing. And so the big thing is the homology. <clears throat> so let's just look at... That's where you use that. Sorry? That this point that you use as R is reductive. That I use... R is a reductive point. Yes. It's really important. Yeah. So, um, so example, we'll take that F equals Q, uh, gamma is equal to SL2Z, R is equal to SL2 over Q, and rho takes uh, gamma well, rho is just the inclusion SL2Z into SL2Q. And you might think the completion is just SL2Q. It's not because this is a group of rank 1, real rank 1, so it's not rigid. And so what we get here is that H1 of U, I'll just write U, um, this result says that this is isomorphic to the direct sum <coughs> n greater than or equal to 1 h1 of sl2z s2nh <coughs> tensored with, and I'll, I'd like to write it this way, s2nh dual. I know that s2nh dual is the same as s2n, but I want to write it this way. And um, the next thing I know is that SL2Z uh, is virtually free. That's easy to see because, I mean, it's absolutely standard because you can choose some torsion-free subgroup of SL2Z. Um, the upper half plane divided by that is a non-compact Riemann surface, therefore has free fundamental group. So, and this implies that H two of SL two Z with any coefficients. If this is divisible, you know, this is a Q module, is equal to zero. So uh, and then when you assemble that with this the statement, this statement here, that tells you that H two of U is zero. So so this is telling us that H two of U is equal to zero, but this discussion I had over here, if h2 of u is zero, that's saying that u is free. So therefore, um, so, and so therefore, u is free. Okay, so what we know unnaturally is that, um, so this is saying that u U is isomorphic to the freely algebra on um, the direct sum of H one S L two Z S two N H. So I left out for the, I left out the odd powers because the cohomology with odd 
odd powers vanishes by because the center of SL2Z acts non-trivially. There's a standard argument. I can, uh, maybe I'll explain that in more detail next time. It's a one-line argument. But anyway, um, we're going to take dual of that, tensored with S2NH. So we're taking, and something I'll explain in a little bit more detail next time is SL2 acts on this. And the claim is that uh, we have to complete it. And then, so we complete by taking the inverse limit of all finite dimensional quotients of this that have an SL2 action. And then um, G rel is unnaturally isomorphic to SL2 semi-direct product U. And then the final comment is that I'll, I'll pursue next time is Eichler Shimura tells us that these cohomology groups here are basically just modular forms. So you're getting a copy of S2NH for every, for every normalized eigenform. And you're also getting another copy for every, the complex conjugate of each normalized cusp form. But I'll discuss, I'll start next time with Eichler Shimura and I'll explain in more detail about this. And then there's a theorem that says the coordinate ring of this for any base point, including DDQ, uh, any base point of M11 has a natural mixed Hodge structure. And the Hodge representations of that are our admissible variations. So I'll stop here. Mm -hmm.